Okay, so that's Queen T, um, the wife of Amenhotep uh, III, and mother or aunt or what have you of uh, Akhenaten, who we'll talk about later. Of course, in the middle we have the great Marcus Garvey, and uh, that thing don't shoot nothing down here. You know, I'm always singing like a military man. Okay, well, we'll... Wait now. Bam! Let that out of the sky. Oh, sorry, man. And the water bottle turns into a pit stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't want y'all to get too hot, so let's keep moving. Marcus Garvey, I think most people here know Marcus Garvey. Uh, his ideas, ideas and ideology are still the probably the strongest and most clear and functional that we have anywhere in Africa right now. So... Uh, to come back, build a national entity that's going to have enough power to lend um, power and influence, safety, and opportunities to the race. Uh, Kwame Nkrumah, this is always important because all of the students here, of course, know Kwame Nkrumah being the uh, first president uh, coming out of the colonial period in Ghana in 1957, being the first post-colonial African government. <coughs> but so I usually don't have to go too much into that about the things he was building, the industrialization he was trying to do and all of that. So they already hold Nkrumah, of course, in high esteem. So I put these words here about uh, Hegel, Marx, Engels, and all of that to let people know that even with all of these heavy names, when Nkrumah read them and then read Garvey, Garvey's the one that fired his imagination and enthusiasm. So for, for the children and for the people coming through, that gives some context uh, for, for Marcus Garvey, then they look at him a little differently if Nkrumah was inspired by him. So things like the Black Star Line, even some of the colors in the flag 